Hi, and welcome to the tutorial video for Prelab Duvercast. In this video, we're going to show you how to produce box plots and numerical summaries using commands in the R programming language. Check out our other video for Prelab 2 if you'd prefer to use R Commander's point and click interface. For this series of Prelab videos, in which we type out R commands, we're going to be using a piece of software called R Studio. R Studio is what's called an Integrated Development Environment, or IDE, for the R programming language. It's important to know that R and RStudio are different things. R is a statistical computing language, whereas RStudio is just a nice interface in which to program in the R language. Before you install RStudio, you must have already downloaded R and R Commander. So see our other videos for how to install R and R Commander on a Mac or on Windows. So to download and install RStudio, open a browser and navigate to rstudio.com. Once it loads in the banner, just go over to down and click Download RStudio. Then click RStudio Desktop, the, the free version, and click that Download button. And then scroll down and select the installer for your platform. I'm on Windows, so I'm going to be using the Windows link, but if you're on a Mac, just click the Mac OS link instead. I'm going to save this file in my Downloads folder and I'm going to replace an existing file. So once the download is complete, open that exe file or whatever file that you've downloaded. And this may take a second to open. Okay, so now this is the RStudio setup wizard. We're just going to click next through this and accept the defaults. And this installation will take a few minutes depending on your computer. Okay, so now that the installation is done, we can just click Finish. And now to open RStudio, just go into the Start menu or Finder or Spotlight and select RStudio and open it up. Okay, so this is RStudio. Right off the bat, you'll notice that its interface is quite different from the standard R interface, but the key components are still there. Namely, on the left side of the window, we still have the R console. This is where we can type commands directly into R. We'll talk about the panes on the right in just a second. So the goal of, the, of this pre-lab is to prepare an analysis report that contains some graphical and numeric summaries of data. We want this report to combine R code, any graphs that we produce, the results of commands that we type to R, as well as written comments. So to do this, we're going to use a feature of R called R Markdown. Let's create a new R Markdown document in R Studio. To do this, we're going to go to File, click New File, and select R Markdown. Now you may be prompted to install some packages that R Markdown missed uh, before this new Markdown uh, window appears. If that's the case, just click Yes. So here we're going to make sure that we've selected Document and we can provide a title for this document, as well as our name in the author field. So we're gonna call this document Prelab 2 Open Data and Summaries. We'll leave our name here. We wanna make sure that the default output format is HTML. This is gonna create essentially a web page for our report. Okay, so make sure that HTML is selected and come down and click OK. So now this is a new template R Markdown document. Up at the top, you can see there's a header that includes the title and author information that we supplied earlier, as well as a date and the output format, which is HTML. It also, we have chunks of shaded regions here. Uh, this is, these are called code chunks, and this is where we'll type R commands, the output of which that we want, we want to include in our report. There's also text that you can see if you scroll around. This is comments for the output of the code. So we really only need this top bit and the first shaded region here, so we can delete everything else. Okay, so now let's step into some analysis. For these tutorial videos, we're going to be using a data set called Cars 93, which contains information about 93 cars on sale in the United States in 1993. Note that this is not the data set that you'll be using for the pre-lab assignment. These videos are just demos using demo data. So I've already downloaded the data set from Canvas and it's in my downloads folder. So let's load it into R. 
And you notice that I've got some, some files here, but none of them are by downloads folder. So I want to pull up a more traditional file browser. So I'm going to click this three dot button over on the right here. So we'll click that. I'm going to click downloads and then open. And now you can see my, a bunch of files that I have in my downloads folder. I want to load cars93.r data into R, so I'm just going to click it. And it's going to ask me if I want to load this data into my global environment. The answer to this is yes. So now you can see that a line of code has been printed to the console and that the environment pane in the top right has an entry called cars93. So let's copy and paste this auto-generated code into our R Markdown document. So to create a new code chunk in the R Markdown document where we can put new code, we're going to come up and press the insert button at the top and select R for R code. And you can see that a blank chunk has been created, a new shaded region here, where we can paste this code in. So code here is a function that loads objects into the R environment. And the thing that we want to load here, the thing between the parentheses, is in quotes, a path to the file that contains the data. And we can see that the object that we loaded is called cars93. It's in the environment pane here. And it contains 93 observations of 27 variables. We can click on cars93 to uh, explore the data set. So in a new tab, our studio has opened the data set for you to explore. And notice how the data contains both quantitative and qualitative variables. So things like there's nominal data like cars make and model, as well as something like the car's uh, drivetrain type, for instance, as well as continuous data like fuel efficiency in both city and highway or the price of the car. So let's go back into our R Markdown file here. And for the pre-lab, we want to make side-by-side -side box plots of the mpg.highway variable grouped by drivetrain type. So to do this, we're going to create a new code chunk, again, by going up and clicking Insert R. And to create a box plot, we're going to make or use of the box plot function in R. So we're going to type box plot. Notice that the syntax of these functions is fairly similar so far. It's the name of the function followed by some parentheses. Notice that there is not a space between the name of the function and that open parenthesis. It's very important. So inside of the parentheses are where arguments to the function go. Arguments include things like the variables that you want to make a box plot of, the variables that you want to make uh, groupings by, or things that you want to customize about the plot. So we're going to make a box plot of the continuous variable mpg.highway. So to do that, we're just going to type mpg.highway. Notice that this is typed exactly like the name of the variable in the cars93 dataset. Notice the capital MPG, period, more case highway. Now we want to group this by drivetrain. So to do this, we're going to type a tilde and then the name of the drivetrain variable. Notice the capitalization, again, is the same as drivetrain. So this is going to tell us that we want a box plot of the MPG highway variable grouped by drivetrain. But we also need to tell R where this data is. So we're going to add a comma and type data equals cars93. This is going to tell R that we want to use the variables mpg.highway and drivetrain from the cars93 data set. Data here is a second argument to the box plot function. So now let's check this out. Let's hit this little play button here. And great, we have some side by side box plots here. We have three box plots, one for each level of the drivetrain variable. We have four-wheel drive, front-wheel drive, and rear-wheel drive. Notice that the front-wheel drive group has a couple of outliers up at the top. So the maximum MPG in the, on the highway for a front-wheel drive car is about 50 miles per gallon. So this is great, but we also want to add a title to this to make a complete graph. So we're going to add another argument to the box plot function here. So to do that, after the data, we're just going to type a comma argument functions in R are separated by commas. And to add a title, we're going to use an argument called main for main title. So main equals, and then in quotes, we'll type the title that we want to put on the box plot. So here I'm going to call this um, side by side box plots of g.highway by drivetrain 
And in 250, we always want to identify who's making the graph. So we're going to add our initials here. Okay. Now let's come and hit the play button again and see what happens. Great. We have a nice title here. The problem is that the title has overflowed, so it, it doesn't all fit in one line. So we want to add a line break somehow. So to do that, we need to use computer speak for a line break, which is backslash n. So I'm going to add a line break here after mpg.highway, type backslash n. This is computer for new line. Okay. So we can press the play button again. And now you can see that the title is broken across two lines. So here, using just a few lines of code, we've created a nice looking side-by-side -side box plot with an appropriate title. So now we'd like to add some numerical summaries of this data to our report. So to do that, we're just gonna create some new lines down below the box plot and come up to insert again and click R. To make numerical summaries, we're going to use a function that's inside of a package that we have to now load into R. So to load this package, type library, parentheses, rcmdr misc. This is the name of the package. This package just contains miscellaneous functions and should have been installed when you installed R Commander. A package in R is just a bundle of pre-written code that somebody else has made to extend R so it does things in a new way. So let's go ahead and create a new line, and we're going to use the function numSummary. Notice the capital S here. The first argument to numSummary is the continuous variable that you want to summarize. So here, that's mpg.highway. Again, notice the capitalization. The problem with just this code is we have to tell R what data set mpg.highway lives in. The way to do that is by going to in, uh, in front of mpg.highway and typing cars93 dollar sign. So this syntax says we want the num summary for the mpg.highway variable that lives inside of the cars93 data set. The dollar sign is the operator that separates data frame from variable. So let's click play. And now we have a numeric summary of the mpg.highway variable for the whole data set. The problem is that we want to group it by drivetrain. So we're going to add another argument to the num summary function by typing comma and groups equals. Now we want to type the drivetrain variable, but we still have to tell R where drivetrain lives. So we're going to type cars93 dollar sign again, and then drivetrain. Now click play, and you'll get a nice numeric summary set for each of the uh, drivetrain categories, one row for each type. So we can see that the output gives us a mean, a standard deviation, an interquartile range, or IQR, and then some percentiles. So the zeroth percentile is the minimum, the 25th percentile, or the first quartile, and the 50th percentile. This is the median. Think about why it might be presented as the 50th percentile, or the second quartile. The median is the number such that half the data is above it and half the data is below it. So think about why that might translate into a 50th percentile. We also get the third quartile that's labeled 75% and the 100th percentile, which is labeled, uh, which is the max. It also tells us the number of observations in each group. So for instance, there were 10 observations in the four wheel drive category. So now let's add some comments to this report that explain some of this output. So on a new line, we can just start typing text down here. So here I'll explain, for instance, the median of the front wheel drive category. So I can start typing the median mpg.highway for front wheel drive cars. It was 29 miles per gallon. But we don't want to use the variable name here, mpg.highway, so I'll just say the median mpg on the highway. So it's more clear to somebody outside of Stats 250. So now let's save and compile our report. So we can come up to File, Save As, and I have a Stats 250 folder in my Documents folder, and I'm going to make a new folder for Prelab 2. You can organize this however you'd like. And inside of my Prelab 2 folder, I'm just going to save this file as Prelab 2 and click Save.
So now to compile the report, we're going to come up to the top bar and press this knit button. And now if you open that console down below, you can see that RStudio is doing a whole bunch of stuff to compile your report, and it'll open a window when it's done that has your nice HTML report. So you can see our title, your author's name, and it combines code, uh, like the box plot function, the graph that we made that's really pretty, as well as loading the library, the output of the num summary command, as well as the sentence that we wrote to explain the num summary output. So now let's upload this to Canvas. So I have saved this in my Statsu50 Prelab 2 folder. And in this folder, you can see there is a .rmd file. That's the report itself. That's the code that we wrote, as well as an HTML file. That is the output or the, the thing that you want to upload to Canvas. So in Canvas, I just have a, a fake assignment here just to demo. I'm going to come over here and click Submit Assignment. And then in the File Upload tab, I'm going to click Browse, open my Prelab 2 folder, and upload the HTML file. Not the RMD file, but the HTML file. Click OK and Submit Assignment. So that's been submitted. If I go into Submission Details over on the right, I can see that this file has been uploaded, and I can just check to make sure that it's the right thing, so I'll click it and select Open, and in a new tab, that nice report that we've made has opened. So that's Prelab 2. We're looking forward to having you in lab this week.